instilled in me to like never give up, you know, that we were just constantly fighting. Um, there was always going to be um, a way to make it. And I think that that's something that has really benefited me in my career. Miss D, you were brilliant. Thank you so much for coming here and being on our stage here at Women of Power. Uh, you spoke a lot about your background uh, in growing up. What was one of the biggest obstacles that you had to overcome as a black ballerina? I'm, I think that because of the way I, I grew up, I feel like it prepared me for the ballet world in this odd way. Um, you know, not having a home or stability most of my childhood, you know, being one of six children in a single parent home, um, we were just constantly uh, in survival mode. And I think that ballet brought out this voice and um, who I knew I could be, but because of the restrictions and of, you know, the situations I grew up in, it didn't allow me to be. Becoming a professional, it was even more clear that like, oh, there aren't black people in this art form. Um, and to enter into American Ballet Theater and be the only black woman in the company for a decade, the first decade of my career, um, was really eye-opening and revealing. Uh, um, but I feel like I took that fuel and I used it to, um, to speak about the issue, to use my platform of American Ballet Theater to um, make people understand and aware and, and help to make change. You spoke about the influence Debbie Allen has had on your life and your career. Can you expand briefly on that? Um, you know, not only because of, I mean, she's, She's an amazing dancer. She's an amazing woman, choreographer. Uh, her voice, her love, like how much um, her students mean to her. It's like they're all her children. Um, and then for her to transition into like this film and TV space, I'm following in her footsteps. And I had no idea that I, uh, that like that was something that was kind of like not really in the forefront of my mind, but um, but starting a production company myself and working on, on film and TV projects, I'm like, Debbie definitely set that mold and, and, um, and I'm following it and it's incredible as a black woman. Uh, but yeah, Debbie's been a, a mentor to me um, since I was 14 years old and she took me under her wing uh, growing up in Los Angeles, you know, and brought me into the black dance community and, and it was really important for me, I think, at that time in my life. Outside of training your body, how do you train your mind for this mm -hmm. position to be a world-renowned ballerina and at that a person of color? Oh, there are so many things again that I feel like I mean I just feel I was born to be to be in this position as a ballerina. Um, it's always been really natural for me. Like you know, I never really had got stage fright. I think I just had a natural understanding of you know when you go on stage, you know, you train your body so that you don't have to worry or think about things when you're on stage. That's why we rehearse so much. So I have that freedom that I'm like, you know, my body knows what it needs to do and that's what I'm gonna rely on and I'm just gonna go out there and be present and be focused and in the moment and enjoy myself. And that's the beauty of live theater. And I feel like that's just kind of how I approach my life in every way and my like mental, emotional preparation is that, you know, there's only so much you can do in the moment. You can't um, anticipate too much or, or try and predict things that are gonna go wrong or what, what's gonna happen and just to be as present as possible. I feel like that's kind of been my like motto um, in every space that I enter into.